So, good morning. I want to thank uh, the organization for inviting me here and uh, for starting this session that I hope will be really interesting for you. And because we are going to speak about water, and as my, my dear friend was saying, water is an essential element that is present almost everywhere in the solar system. Of course, it's present on the Earth. And uh, we are accustomed to see the Earth. And we are also wrongly thinking of the Earth as a water planet. Yeah, indeed, it's the only planet where water is in a permanent three-state condition, either as a vapor, as liquid, and as ice in the three states of the water, but is not so abundant as we think about it. And it's not so abundant now that we are in the Anthropocene time where the humankind is dominating the behavior of the surface of the Earth, including the water. So if we're going to look at the quantity of water on the Earth, then we, despite their, its abundance on the surface, it means it only represents the one thousandth of the total Earth volume. And even if it's a lot of billion of cubic kilometers, uh, however, 96.5% is oceans and seas. It means salty water. Uh, 1.8 is trapped in ices, either in the North and South Pole and many other regions including uh, glaciers on the mountains. 1.6% only is uh, groundwater. And of this water, only 0.013% uh, is lake, are lakes, and much less are rivers. A little bit more is in the atmosphere, but as a vapor, and we know that here and then is becoming very unstable, the condition of the atmosphere in, uh, for the water and for the precipitations. And there is a, a remnant, remnant of 0.8% uh, uh, that uh, is trapped in different way, in rocks, in the permafrost, uh, and so forth. It means that the fresh water, so the water that we can use uh, is at maximum 2.5% of the total water that is on the Earth. That, graphically speaking, means that if this is the Earth, the total water is, uh, the, is this sphere here, then the fresh water is only this. And if we go more in detail, uh, the real fresh water, like a river, is only a very, very tiny, small dot of water. So, where else is the water in our solar system? Well. We know that Mercury and Venus are in a condition where water cannot be present except in very special cases, or as in the case of a Venus atmosphere in some, in some layers of the atmosphere as vapor. Then the Earth occurs to be exactly in the right point where water can be in the three states, here. And Mars is at the very edge of, this, of these conditions, and in fact, we may find ice, vapor, and for very small moment, also liquid water on Mars. Jupiter, from Jupiter on, water can only be present as ice at the surface, but eventually can be liquid in a certain condition, for example, under the crust of uh, many of the satellites of Jupiter and, uh, and Saturn. Then Mars. Mars has uh, ice at the both, both the poles, ice in the North uh, Pole mostly, and ice and uh, CO2 ice in the South Pole. Uh, there are clouds of water vapor here and then, and there, are, and there is also some uh, not permanent, actually, small, uh, during a very small amount of time may be water in a liquid state at the surface, simply because the, the triple point of water on Mars has a little margin there. But if we are looking at the distribution of water on Mars, we may see that 
there is quite a lot of abundance, up to more than 64% in the northern region, mostly uh, there, but there is also water here and then detected at uh, uh, intermediate or equatorial regions, of course, in a very small percentage. And that's the real point with respect to the exploration, because small percentage means a huge need of processing of the ground soil in order to extract the water, because uh, we drink water, and a glass of water means a lot of water, looking at, at, at that as a percentage of quantity on the surface. We have also discovered, and has been debated at, at length, liquid water on the subsurface of Mars at 1.4 kilometers in the depth, not usable for exploration has been debated, it exists, it's not exists, it was true, it was not true. Well, let's say that we, the signals that we have received from the, the, the Marxist radar are pretty straightforward. However, any radar needs an interpretation, and the interpretation can be tricky to, 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 be, to be fully understood. But recently, in the last two years, we had other papers, including gravimetric measurement that confirmed the fact that there is some kind of layering in the subsurface of Mars exactly in that region that is compatible with the existence of water, I mean, of light material. We have called it Lacus Argentarium in honor of Professor Picardi that was the person that imagined and operated for, for a long time the radar, Mars's radar. And then, let's go finally to the moon. Let's recall again that water, I mean, we are looking in desperation for resources. Resources that can be used and useful for the humankind. But any kind of exploration needs some critical resource, that is water. And uh, water on the moon, despite the many journalists and uh, papers that say, well, found water on the moon and so forth. But if you go into the uh, published and referenced papers, you find that water abundance is between five and 20 parts per million on the moon, globally. However, there are good indications that in some uh, areas, I mean, uh, and, and the Aitken crater, the South Pole region is one of these, uh, water can be more abundant. I still say can be, because none of the instruments that have been observed so far that region could really say as if the H2 and oxygen molecules that has been uh, observed are really water, and second, which is the quantity, that is the critical part for exploration. I mean, again, if I have uh, 20 parts per million, means that I have to process one ton of, uh, of uh, material in order to have more or less one liter of water, it's, it's crazy, it's not convenient. So we need a more a more deep understanding and possibly evaluation of the quantity of water that is there. So we need some instruments. I don't know and uh, I have some doubt that we can do it entirely from remote, so from orbiter. I do believe that we should go there to really make an evaluation. And if we are thinking about a permanent base, human base on the moon, the presence of not presence of water in a reasonable quantity is a crucial part. And with that, uh, thank you, and I leave the floor to the next speaker.